We may be going again. Bendix got tens. Here comes the re-race. Bendix makes it 1.65 million. And he flops a set. But the action's been folded to Jason Mercier on the button. He's got pocket sixes. He raises. 8-10 suited for Faraz in the small blind. A little one-gapper. A raise here would be about as shocking as the end of the movie Braveheart. You know it's going to happen, but you still think it might not. Faraz does three bet to 31,000. Ace-4 suited for Nicholas Heineke. He folds. Well, at least Faraz isn't as out of line this time. And Heineke just folded two hearts. Jason calls. We're off to the flop. Yeah, you can't fold that to Faraz. Wow. A set for Mercia. A straight draw and a flush draw for Jacka. Well, see you at the river. Jacka continues for 39,000. And if Jason raises here, which he could very well do, it is all going in. Mercia does raise, makes it 93,000. Now a shove here from Faraz would be too big, but make no mistake, neither of these guys is folding. I don't know how you stay composed making a bet like this at these stakes. Faraz re-raises. It's a three bet to 205,000. How much you started with? I think right on 800. Jason's going to pile it in here. Sometimes he'll be behind, yeah, but so much more often Faraz is going to have a big draw just like this. On. There's the shove. And there's the call from Jacka. I don't think Faraz is expecting Jason to be this strong. This is a clash of two of the biggest stacks in the tournament. There's 1.6 million in the middle and it's going Mercia's way unless Faraz can hit a heart to make a flush or a queen or a seven to make a straight. And he needs to hit on the river. Down to just 26% equity. And on the verge of elimination. It's a blank. Yeah, Faraz, will be yeah, buddy. Faraz is out. Good luck, gentlemen. Faraz's style is just ridiculously crazy. His poker game is also pretty wild. Benefield raising from the cutoff with eights. Martin Finger calls on the button with King Queen. O'Dwyer calls as well. We're going three way to this flop. He was getting some amazeball odds. Everyone's bebopping and pre flopping perfectly so far. Whoa, something for everyone. Top pair for O'Dwyer, second pair for Finger, a set of eights for Benefield, and 95% equity. If this flop had any more something for everyone, it would be a 1970s black comedy starring Michael York and Angela Lansbury. Benefield continues for 95,000. Finger folds his pair of kings. That's gotta be the first time Angela Lansbury's ever been referenced on a poker show, right? I am ready to accept my award. O'Dwyer with top pair sticks around. He is in a world of hurt. Four on the turn. O'Dwyer now drawing dead. Steve could very easily call two or three times. Here comes bet number two. 220,000. The worst part for Steve is that if he calls here, there are so many cards that can come that will make him think he should call a third bet. O'Dwyer. Holes again, leaving himself 458,000. There's 810,000 in the middle. And he doesn't really consider raising because if he's ahead, he doesn't want to fold out a potential third bluff on the river. Oh, that's a horrible river card for O'Dwyer. He now has two pair. Come on. Benefield shoves. This is a terrible spot for Steve. <sighs> wow. David could definitely be betting worse aces. He could be betting other value hands that Steve's ahead of. Sure, Benefield's got flushes and sets in his range too, but ace nine in this spot, it's like an X-Men number one. Way too valuable to fold. Will O'Dwyer call it off? I call. Yes, he will. Some would call that a hero call. I just call it a modern day call deck. And that call will result in the elimination of Steve O'Dwyer. Out in 11th. Steve brings his own tea to tournaments, and now he's just steeped in sadness. Thank you. Adrian Alain, first to act. Pocket eights. Here we go again. He raises to 525,000. We may be going again. Bendix got tens. This isn't a flip. 
Here comes the re-race. Bendik makes it 1.65 million. No, oh, now that he's got chips, he's not all jam happy. Well, they are pretty deep. It doesn't have to go all in pre-flop. Alan just calls, and he'll get to play the flop in position. And he flops a set! Maybe, just maybe, the ace will save Bendek from getting stacked here. I don't know, the ace might be a scare card, but I'm pretty sure Bendek's fear receptors went out with popcorn ceilings. He's continued the flop for 1.6 million. Alan calls, will that slow Bendek down? Nothing has slowed him down thus far. The turn card is a 10. That's ball game. A cooler developing here, set over set. Now Bendik finally slows down. Bendik has checked it. Alan is betting. 1.5 million, a small bet into a huge pot. Really small. How much you play more? Is this a terrible Hollywood or just a plain old D gaff? Then help. I am leaning toward the former. Alan breathing heavy. I think it's because he expects to have the best hand pretty much always. Bendik loading up for a check raise. He makes it 4.25 million. Everything in his hand has been standard up until this point. Against another player, Alan may not be loving this, but Bendik plays everything super fast, even two pair hands. Just a call from Alan, and he's going to need those quads again. Oh man, I didn't even think of that. Nobody gets quads twice. Complete brick on the river. All in. Bendik shoves. A land calls and it's over. Let's everybody take a second to let this sink in. The grand final champion has been crowned. Jan Bendik has won the EPT 12 yes. grand yes. final. Yes. Yes. And France cannot believe it. Action at the feature table is on Dan Coleman. Pocket fours under the gun. He raises to 45,000. Finger and Trinovsky are folded. Seidel's on the button, and we haven't seen his hole cards. Come on, Seidel. Grow a beard. Also show us your hole cards. Well, whatever he has, he thinks it's worth a call on the button. Martin Jakobsen in the big blind. Has a seven offsuit. You've probably got no choice but to defend a medium ace here, even though you can't love it. He calls as well. We're going three-way to the flop. And that flop has a four on it. A set for Coleman. What's Martin doing? He should be checking here. This is bad timing. He leads the flop for 77,000. I like a flat call here from Colin because I think Martin's donk leading this flop with a bad hand way more often than a good one. So if Dan raises, he probably gets two folds way too often, which you don't want. You want Martin to keep bluffing. Coleman does just call. And Seidel folds. We'll never know what he had. Ten on the turn. Jakobsen now with a gut shot. Martin's probably never going to get a fold here unless the board runs out so badly for fours that it makes his hand actually win. He's betting again with just 9% equity. 155,000. There's not much more reason for Dan to fold now than there was on the flop. 7-8 got there.
Once again, Coleman just calls. 627,000 in the middle. One card to come. And that card is a king. A set of fours are good. Yeah, I don't think Dan's ever folding. Hopefully Martin just gives up. Oh. He bluff shoves! Or he just blasts off. Probably not gonna work. Mm. Quick call from Coleman. And Jakobsen's out! Yeah, you probably got me out. Let me just calmly take a second before exiting this 50k tournament. Maya Roca on the button, pocket eights, raises. It's Shemian's big blind. He's got king six of clubs. Eh, good enough for a poke. He defends. Roca with the betting lead and the advantage of position. And the advantage of flopping top set. Plus a pair for Shemian. Roca's getting at least one bet out of him. Action check to Roca. And he continues for 18,000. There's the call from Shemian. Can he get three streets, though? Highly likely. A six on the turn. That's trips for Shemian and a full house for Roka. Good night, nurse. And Shemian. Now leading out for 43,000. What a dream for my Roka. He just calls. All is in big, big trouble. The river card is a seven, so a few straight draws got there. Shemian's very likely to bet this again. I think this goes bet, raise, maybe fold sometimes. Wow, Shemian checks. What? He's not going for a check raise. That would be negative swag. Roka bets 87,000. Shemian calls. Wow, he lost the minimum there. Yeah, he loses the hand, but he wins the universe. You lose more from landing on Boardwalk with a hotel on it than he just did on that hand. He must have some kind of live read on Maya Roca. Swagtastic. I practically broke the swaggle off my swagometer. Well...